So thanks again for joining me for today's webinar. I'm very excited about it. Um, let's go through some housekeeping items at first. Uh, just make sure to turn off or silence your phone, uh, close Facebook tab on all browsers, um, and make sure to make it interactive and fun. Ask as many questions as you can over the chat. Uh, I've got my team here with me, which will point out to me if you know I, I'm missing something, if you have a question. I'm gonna have try to make some time for a Q&A at the end, uh, but you don't necessarily have to wait till the end if you have a pressing question that you wanna share with us. Uh, let's see. All right, so now if you are either the owner, general manager, uh, marketing director, or somebody of influence in a power sports marine and RV dealership, and you're serious about handling internet leads, uh, particularly in the in the most recent climate of what's been going on lately uh, with a heightened uh, demand in the industry, uh, then you're in the right place. This is gonna help you alleviate a lot of the things that have been going on lately. And it's gonna show you the tactics that we successfully use uh, to improve not only the return on investment that you get on the leads you're getting, but also just <laughs> the quality of your work life, um, just to smooth things out and make it easier for you. So I'm going to try to keep it brief, but there's a lot of content that I have to go over. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can quickly and effortlessly follow up with qualified leads and maximize your ROI, which uh, as some of you know, is return on investment, um, how you're going to optimize the sales process uh, for your marketing and boost more revenue and profitability for your dealership, and how to use lead follow-up and automation technology so your team can focus on like what really matters most, which is leaving your customers happy, giving them a, a great user experience from beginning to end, right? Even from before they step they set foot on your dealership, um, you know, so that they have a good experience, pleasant experience as far as um, their online shopping experience. So <clears throat> I value your time. Why listen to me? Why sit here and spend your next 45 to 60 minutes, uh, you know, listening to what I have to say? Uh, I'll give you a few pointers. I won't spend too much time on it, but I've been in digital marketing for over 15 years. I originally started out in the car industry. Later on, realized there was a huge disparity between car dealers and power sports marine and RV dealers. Car dealers are so much more money in that industry that they get all the goodies, all of the resources, power sports, um, boating and, and, and marine dealers don't get. And the outdoor industry, for me in general, I have a passion for it. And I was like, oh man, they really need help. So there came about the birth of Beyond Creative and we're essentially a lead generating and lead management uh, company that helps dealers like yours get more leads from the internet. And now, particularly in today's climate where a lot of dealers aren't really having a problem generating leads, managing those leads in the proper way. So it's the best user experience for their customers, but also so you know that you're getting the most return investment that you're not leaving money on the table. I've had uh, columns in power sports business and voting industry. And I've had the pleasure of doing collaborations with industry leaders, such as Dealer News, Mark Sheffield, Lot Vantage, just to name a few. Now, here are some of the big and small guys too that we help. Um, these are like our family. They're some of the dealers that, that we help. Um, and you know some of the common pain points that either they had uh, at one point or that a lot of the dealers that we speak to have is that they say to us, BDC companies are too expensive. Expensive. What's BDC? Business Development Center. It's just really a fancy term for a follow-up company, right? So they say follow-up companies are not power sports focused, or my internal team does not really do enough follow-up. Um, my team is too busy to do the follow-up, um, or there's just too many leads going on right now to handle internally. So what's really the real problem as opposed to the pain point? Well, leads don't get a good user experience when all of those pain points are present or some of them. <clears throat> what does that mean? 
it means that by the time if they do end up buying from you, by the time they do, they're not necessarily pleased. And so when it comes to having a return customer, you're much less likely to be able to reap that reward. Most dealers don't reach out enough times, which pretty much you know equals out to uh, not being able to get the most out of the current dealers that you're getting, uh, sorry, the current leads that you're getting. And almost as much as 80% of dealers are gonna start losing customers just after the first 60 seconds of not responding. So bottom line, this is just all missed opportunity. Now, I've got this case study I really like to show often, which is, you know, 34,000, almost 35,000 lead calls generated over the span of about, uh, what's that? Just, uh, you're looking at years time or so. And it's clear the marketing we did for them, lead generation worked, right? But I always ask one question, did it matter? And you may already know the answer to this, which is what is the number one biggest factor that separates a regular dealership between the rest? And two words, that's simple. It boils down to lead handling. What I have encountered while working with dealers like yours is that clockwork, like clockwork, 20% of dealerships are going to take 80% of the revenue. And it boils down to the previous slide which was how they handled their leads. So let's talk about what the cost of a bad uh, lead follow-up strategy um, looks like. Well, you've got form uh, submissions. So meaning that somebody went on your website, they converted, they gave you their info, but you know they didn't make an appointment, they didn't show up um, if they didn't make an appointment. And then at the end of the day, it never turned or materialized into any kind of deal. Sales are gonna start dropping after just 60 seconds of not responding. So that's a big one. You've probably heard me mention this already multiple times. And you're gonna probably hear it a few more times and I'm gonna go into detail as to why that's important. Slow response time is gonna equal a poor customer experience. Insufficient number of touch points are gonna leave leads that converted on your website or other things, your other lead sources that you're paying a lot of money for such as Cycle Trader unconverted. Um, you're going to have a poor connect rate with these leads, meaning you tried reaching out to them, but you got voicemail, voicemail, you know, you feel like you're getting ghosted. You'll have crappy appointment ratios or tons of missed appointments. Now, again, this is all nothing but tons of missed revenue opportunity. Now, let's talk about where the problem starts as opposed to like pain points and kind of the, the symptoms, right? 78% of dealers, almost 80% will lose customers when they take longer than 60 seconds to respond. So you've heard this one before. Why is that? Let's look at the numbers. The stats show us that your conversion rate percentage is not only exponential when you reach out, and I'm gonna get into via what platforms to reach out by later on, but reaching out within 60 seconds. It's also important that you reach out with the most amount of platforms as possible, but that's a little bit of a separate topic for just a few, few minutes, uh, we'll go into that. Now notice, in the chart, I don't know how difficult it may be for you to see on your screen, but you kind of level out at almost uh, 98, close to 100% at about three minutes. But thereafter, it starts to very exponentially go down. Now, if you think about, you know, your dealer may be closed on Sundays and Mondays, as are vast majority of power sports, even boat and marine dealers. Um, what does that mean? If a lead came in just shortly after you closed on Saturday, by the time that you know the person in charge of following up with these leads at your store gets back to them on Tuesday morning, that thing's a dud, you know? Um, here's another problem, right? Where the problem kind of continues. Reps are gonna make 75% fewer contact attempts that they think they do. So when the sales manager asks them, like, oh, maybe you reach out to that guy. They're genuinely telling you what they think, but it's just the perception aspect. The metrics show us that they don't reach out enough times. Here's why the numbers back it up. You'll see that this is with regard to call attempts, not even emails or text messages. You start veering toward the 90 percentile as far as your conversion, being able to convert into a sale past uh, touch point number five, meaning call number five, right? Now, sales reps give up on leads after just 1.3 contact attempts. 
just as little as 1.3 contact attempts. It's just an average. So at this point, uh, this is exactly how we feel, right? And let's talk about some of the, the uh, some more about common symptoms of a bad follow-up strategy and how you may be able to identify, is this something that's happening to me at my dealership? Well, um, are you kind of being pitched the next like shiniest optic as far as software and it feels overly complicated or needlessly and ex uh, needlessly expensive? Um, and all these technologies with bells and whistles that don't really address what you truly need. That's one of the things that you could look at. I mean, this is this chart in the screen will show you, right? It just looks chaotic. Having to log into more than just one dashboard, but really some dealers I know, you know, they're logging into a dozen. Um, it's just madness. Another thing you may feel is like, oh man, these leads I'm getting from here, or from there, or from XYZ are low quality. Now I put on the screen seemingly low quality because of the aspect that if the follow-up is there, and this is what you're gonna learn as I go through this today, and what you're gonna discover, that a lot of those leads truly weren't low quality. It's just that attention span in today's day and age in general just gets slower. So we need to do a better job at reaching out quickly, reaching out in the right place, meeting customers and meeting leads where they're at. So your team may be struggling with booked appointment ratio or getting a lot of no-shows. They may also feel like they're getting ghosted or the response is just kind of not there from the leads. This kind of ties a little bit back into the seemingly low quality type of deal. But you know, you may hear from yourself, stop, oh, that guy's just a tire kicker. Well, that just may be that, you know, the, the sales team or that particular sales member, that the particular sales rep may be trying to reach out in a way that the lead doesn't feel comfortable talking to the man. And so I'm gonna give you formulas for addressing that and things that are gonna be super important in what channels to use so that you know, hey, this is how the lead wants to interact and I'm gonna meet them where they're at. Does your sales staff complain about feeling overwhelmed? That's usually a telltale sign. Um, of the aspect that you have either just, you know, too, they have, they may have very well have too much on their plate. And that's why today's topic is so important because the automation is going to lift a lot of that off of their shoulders. Uh, it's going to help them really be concerned with what they, you know, do best, which is once the lead comes into the showroom, be personable, be very human. Um, and, and, providing a very personalized service to them. So let's stop talking about the problems and the symptoms and the pain points. And let's go a little bit more solution focused and solution driven right now. So let's talk about the three main follow-up success strategies for dealerships. I'm actually gonna <clears throat> show you some cool examples too real time where I'll show you a dashboard of the weapon of choice that we use to make this happen. A lot of what I'm going to show you, you can do manually. Um, but gosh, that's a lot of work, right? So number one is your outreach cadence, setting a pace and structure for your outreach. I'm going to give you, and if, if you're interested in getting the slide deck here, just kind of type your info on the chat and I'll make sure that you get a copy of it um, because this is going to have somewhat of, a, of, of, an, of an outline of a map for your cadence that you can use. Furthermore, if uh, toward later on the end of the webinar, you want to set a one-on-one -on -one with me at no obligation and completely free where I can give you more details on what to write and everything, and I'm going to show you some of that in a second, um, then feel free to just let me know in the chat. But the cadence and the structure of your outreach is super critical and important. How many times you're gonna reach out, how quickly you're gonna reach out, um, <clears throat> what different channels you're gonna reach out, and the message that you're gonna be putting out is all part of the cadence, okay? So next, let me go into a little bit of a live example. Now, if it happens that I screw something up here, 
just let me know. But let's talk about, let's go into marketing. I've got a dashboard here. This is kind of our preferred weapon of choice, which is Dealer Lead Pro. Um, we developed this software specifically for dealerships in Power Sports, Marine, and RV because of the struggle that we're addressing today, right? So let's talk about a cadence, what that would look like. Well, let's look at, for instance, let's say you're running Facebook ads and you've got, you know, your leads coming in from Facebook. Now, by the way, these could be leads from the manufacturer. These could be leads from Google ads or other sources such as Rolex or, or Cycle Trader, RV Trader, ATV Trader, you name it, right? So one of the things we do as lead management as a firm is that we parse and we set up in place through an onboarding a way so that um, all of your lead sources are being bottled into one place so that they can be better managed. That is one of the secrets to being more successful at it. I'd be more than happy to share with you how we do it. The first thing is showing you Dealer Lead Pro, which is a software where we put it. So let me show you a little bit of what the typical, if you would, um, campaign looks like, right? In this particular case, a lead comes in. If it comes in during dealership business hours, we're going to do three things right off the bat, which is one of the things that I was mentioning here in the cadence. And I'll get into a little bit more detail with regards to having an automatic email and text, and then doing an immediate connection with the lead. So here in Dealer Lead Pro, we generate an email, right? Which could look a little bit something like this. It's very simplistic. Okay, so don't keep, don't, don't think, don't overthink it. it. In reality, what we want here is to, to um, get them to respond. Because remember, a lot of people, they put in their information and then they get busy or they got distracted or they got sidetracked, whatever the case may be. So we want to keep them engaged. So, you know, I've seen a lot of dealers just put tons of information on that email. And the first thing people are going to do is they're just going to toss it out. So your verbiage, now, this is kind of like a starting one in the sense that you could use something like this, but, you know, it's best to really make it go along the lines of what your dealership would use. Thanks for requesting more information on Facebook. What features matter mostly in the vehicle you need? Now, these are a little bit um, general, but we do have the capability of customizing this more because we get information on what vehicle they're looking at and we can plug that right in there. Are there any other vehicles that caught your eye? We have an ample selection you can pick from on our website. And then <clears throat> as you can see here, Dealer Lead Pro will insert the user email signature. So the cool thing about this is in particular, all of the people that are set up in the campaign, right? It'll round robin them. So this is not just this general email. It looks very personalized coming from a person directly, right? Simultaneously, what's gonna happen is a call is gonna be generated. It's gonna to go to that salesperson's either cell phone or wherever you want it to go. You may want it to go to the receptionist, that's fine, or directly to the sales department's line. Another important thing is a text message. So why do we do these three channels at once? I'm glad you asked. Because of the fact that we want to try to zone out the way that this person, this particular lead, remember, it's a very unique individual at the other end, right? Um, the Their way of interacting, how do they want to go about their communication with you. And you wanna to try to meet them there. You really wanna do a good job at like saying like, okay, I'm gonna meet you where you're at. A lot of dealers, I've seen some incredible examples of some dealerships, two locations, same dealer, same owner, um, just different general managers in each location. One with an older school of thought. Oh yeah, call, 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 smile and dial. I'm not against calls, I'm not saying that. But then the other location was more of, you know, making sure they were diligent on the emails, on the text, and also picking up the phone, but they didn't like just shove the phone down people's throats. And guess who performed better at getting a response? Not the one that was always just picking up the phone. That speaks to the aspect of the fact of meeting people where they're at. So again, <clears throat> you know, very simple sort of inquiry. We got your inquiry on off-road vehicles through Facebook. Can you talk now? And all of that's doing is trying to get the engagement. So the very next things you're going to see here is 
the, there's, again, a cadence. These things can be customized according to how you know your demographic works best, your target audience. Maybe a day spaced apart, maybe too, too often. Maybe you want to space that out two or three days in between. But after the first initial three contacts, there's a plethora of things that can happen. Then the day after, there's an email. The day after that, there's a text. The day after that, there's another email and a text. Now, in this particular example, there are no ringless voicemails. But there's also a, an option to do something called a ringless voicemail, which you know, ideally would be recorded by the salesperson if it's on a round robin. And it says, hey, this is Joe over at ABC Power Sports. I got your inquiry on that you, you know, that you were looking at our inventory on Facebook. I really want to make sure that all of your needs are met. Give me a holler back at bop, 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 bop. And we could do that very simply here through Dealerly Pro by adding a voicemail. There's a ton of other things we could do. Add a task so you can add a reminder to follow up. If the lead came in through Messenger, we can follow up on Messenger, calls, wait times, manual calls. I mean, you name it, right? just a plethora of different things, but you get the point, which is following up the calls we do not do unless it's during business hours. We don't want to bother people at midnight. If, if it was a lead that came in at midnight, some, you know, dealers in more heavily metropolitan areas would kind of disagree with that a lot, but I just still think it's a little bit of like, you know, common courtesy. So this is, um, you know, pretty much a good indication of what this, initial first drip follow-up campaign would look like. Now, keep in mind, there's so many other things that we could do this for. For instance, service, okay? So a lead coming in for service, website inquiries. We could do it so that once they've scheduled an appointment, they get reminders to come into their appointments. Because once the lead converts on your website, the next thing you sell them is an appointment to come in. After you sell them the appointment, you're selling them them sh actually showing up. And then your team is, they can just take it from there. After that, they have no problem. So if you got any questions on the chat with regards to the software or anything that I just covered, feel free to type it in. I'll try my best to come right back to that. Um, if I have some time, if I'm, I think I'm doing okay with time right now, I'll go into more features about um, Dealerly Pro, which is just a phenomenal, phenomenal software. Okay, so what's number two out of the three? Outreach automation, using technology to do all of the hard work, right? You saw some of that aspect in what I just showed you, which was essentially, um, we were talking about the cadence, but you saw how we were pretty much doing a lot of different channels and you saw how that chain, which fires off automatically, is doing that automation and the heavy lifting for you. So I've already kind of used, I've already kind of showed you that example and why that's important. But why, why is it truly important as far as the numbers go? Well, we know that statistics show us that the use of multiple communication channel increases contact success by a rate of 161%. It's crazy. I mean, truly, truly insane. So a, a simple and quick to implement tactical elements of a proper follow-up plan are going to include the automatic call lead generation to either your dealership or the salesperson, ringless voicemail drops, automated text, automated emails, and of course, your carefully crafted messaging. This is for major new and used unit sales. It can be morphed and changed to look differently for service, for parts and accessories, and other fixed stops um, aspect of your operation. Let me show you a little bit since we've got, I think I'm doing okay with time. Let me show you a bit of some more examples on some of the integrations that we can accomplish through Let's say um, Dealerly Pro. Well, uh, let's see. We can integrate Facebook Messenger, as you could see there on the screen. We can integrate text messages. We can integrate calls. We can integrate 
web chats, which I'm not seeing my most recent web chat on here, but web chats, it's, it's really cool. Let me show you how that kind of works. So <clears throat> it's not an actual live web chat, but I argue it's even better. Do you have a question? Text us. So it's not deceptive. It just says text us. You put in your information here. You put in your phone number. Now, I don't know if it's going to work for me since I'm already in the system. I've done a few tests or whatever. But then you hit send and what happens here, they're going to get a, you know, thank you message. And then it's going to flow into the unread conversations panel. See, there it is with a bubble that shows that it's a web chat. Now, when you reply, and this is really, really cool. And you say, hi, Joe, what vehicle are you looking at? And you hit enter, right? Really cool thing about that is, let me see if I can, oh gosh, I hope I don't mess up sharing of my screen here because I'm gonna try to do some Apple AirPlay. Let's see. Um, just bear with me. Let's see. Share. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So check that out. It just came in to my text messages, right? So very, very neat. Um, let me now reshare my, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. Let me know if you guys have any issues seeing what I'm sharing. So <clears throat> real time, super awesome. Now you've got the person's text. And then from there on, of course, you know, you can go into, um, developing rapport with this person. I've got some amazing examples on follow-up what we commonly call just industry jargon BDC. So if you wanna see how we do it and how we open people up and we just, it's really just about having a warm chat and conversation with them. I'd be more than happy to show you examples on that. Um, but one of the things we keep in mind is, okay, so, so maybe they came in as an inquiry, for instance, from Facebook, like Facebook Messenger, like as an example, you know, right here. I uh, see, let's fetch older messages. <clears throat> so th this is a marketplace uh, inquiry. So there's an autoresponder that, you know, the dealer usually will, will set up, but then, you know, we kick in as a team and, you know, we start asking questions. Um, we start engaging. We start just being very human, sending pictures of the, of the vehicle, you know, kind of getting them in love with it. And then of course, what we do is we essentially ask for, <clears throat> we ask for, for the appointment. And once they've booked, they've been booked into an appointment, the very next thing after that is having them in an automation sequence that is going to sell them showing up to the appointment. Okay, so it's super, super critical. Now, <clears throat> Dealerly Pro has on here, I believe for this particular dealership, they're not using the feature, but on here, <clears throat> you would have scheduling appointments and you could keep track of you know, scheduling the appointment who showed, who didn't show. Let me see if maybe we have one in ours so we can show. <clears throat> and you can get reports on it. See, confirmed, no show. Um, you can break it down by the appointment for, for the team. Um, just tons of stuff that later on you can get a report on that, which we've got some amazing reporting, not only on appointments, we've also got some great reporting too on call tracking. So that's a whole another option that Dealerly Pro offers, which is amazing, which is um, attribution report, call reporting as well. So you could see where the calls are coming in from, who's a first time caller, were there any missed calls? <clears throat> so ours is, you know, a little bit flimsier, I guess, if you would, than a dealerships would, um, with a lot, dealerships would have a lot more call volume, but this is our particular dashboard. So probably not as worthwhile to show. So hopefully that gives you a good, good example with regards to why it's important to have as many channels as possible, right? 
on the automation aspect. And again, it boils down to having the reliable integration, having the automation. And this is the reason why your contact success rate will go up by 161%. Okay. And now let's go over to number three and I'll take a sip of water right before moving on to that. Cool. So valuable reporting. I kind of probably <laughs> um, gave, showed my card ahead of time on the last slide and the last examples that I was showing. But complete lead reporting is super critical, right? Having a handle on how many calls you're getting from Cycle Trader, how many calls you're getting from uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, your search engine optimization efforts, Rolic, you name it. And that's one of the beauties. I can get into the back, into the dashboard again and show you a little bit more, but we can set up phone number pools for your website. We can set up specified phone numbers uh, dedicated for each particular campaign. It's super, super cool. And you can listen to the call recording to see how that's being handled. And also if Perhaps, let's say it's Google ads you're running and the call is like, I don't know, you're an RV dealership and the next thing you know, you got a call for like, you know, tracker bass boats. You're like, okay, <laughs> we must be running an ad incorrectly or, or, or a wrong keyword. So super valuable to have that call recording to be able to know if you're on point with regards to your marketing. But of course, on the larger picture, being able to, you know, have key performance indicators, super important, right? Knowing your reply rates and booking ratios. So I, I kind of showed my hand a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of schedule with regards to being able to see um, reports for appointments, no shows, cancellations, rescheduled, confirmed, showed up, etc. Super critical. But you also want to see how many people are actually replying to your campaign? So like, look at, for instance, the top one here on, on the screen. Let me do a little, little pointer if I can. Let's see. Check this out. So this one right here, right, which is the Facebook follow-up. Now, this one, funny enough, is outdated um, because uh, there are now like a, nearly a thousand. This, this one in particular, this one particular campaign. But look at the reply rate, almost 62%. Kind of unheard of for Facebook leads. And that's really, really cool. Knowing those metrics, like look at this, like a lot of a lot of your sales guys may say, well, I don't know, those leads from the manufacturer are just kind of crappy. Mm, look at that, almost 90% reply rate. So really knowing where you stand, having a holistic approach on your metrics, super, super critical, important component. So let me show you <clears throat> some more really cool stuff here on the back end with regards to reports. You can put in, let's see, um, you can put in for reports, you could sync in your Google Ads and it, everything you would see on your Google Ads dashboard will show up here. So now you're seeing your cost per campaign, cost per click, cost per leads. You can do the same thing with your Facebook ads. You can have, you, you know, you can look at the ad sets. You can look, because I'm streaming, it's going a little bit slower. So don't mind that, please. Um, you could see which ads you're particularly running. You have attribution reports. to see where each things are coming from and what's converting. Now, if something isn't set up, of course, you may not see an actual conversion of revenue, et cetera. This one's really cool. This is one of my favorite, the call reports, thank you, which show you um, you know, what you're like getting really vast majority of your traffic from. So here you can really select your date range, right? So you could just look at the past week or all time. You could look at whatever tracking number specifically, whether it's GMB, is it your Google My Business? Is it website traffic? Um, is it maybe your outbound uh, internet leads slash BDC specialist? Perhaps it's that person 
and you're seeing what kind of you know benefits they're reaping for you. So you'll see here on top sources, okay, look at that. Direct, sometimes direct happens to be where it's something for whatever reason couldn't be tracked. Vast majority of people, unless you have a super easy website, rarely visit it directly. But sometimes, you know, it's unfortunate, but it'll happen that stuff can be tracked and it'll go into the direct bucket. But you get a good idea from Google Paid Organic. And here you'll be able to see was, were they, was, the, was the call answered? Was it not? What's the source type? Google Organic, direct? Um, you'll be able to mark it as no, this wasn't a lead or this was a, this was a lead. You'll be able to, it's kind of blurred out just to kind of protect privacy, but you'll have options to listen to the call. Similarly here on DLD Pro, which is really cool, inside of conversations, you know, you could see at a glance all of the contact history for one particular contact. And you could see like, okay, well, this person, you know, we chatted with them and we sent them some emails, we sent them some text. Oh, we made an outbound call or they made a call to us and, you know, um, and you can listen to it right then and there. Like, look, this is a solid lead, uh, you know, and, and, and you could see from here, like, okay, wow, that's a 12 minute call and you can listen to it. Now you click on the avatar on the top, right? It'll take you to the leads record. And what's so cool. Look at this. You could see where they came from in the activity panel. Oh boy. They visited. Um, the home page and through organic search and they clicked on the phone number, clicked to call and that became a lead, a hot lead. So it's amazing here, what you could see just from one particular uh, window pane, then you can go to task, add, ask, uh, add task for yourself to follow up or for somebody else, add notes, of course, and you can even book an appointment directly from there. So anyway, I digress. The main point of this particular thing that I wanted to talk about was the importance of setting up as many different platforms as you possibly can as far as integration of different sources. So here, like for instance, the phone numbers, you can create one-off phone numbers. Each of these phone numbers could be one, one, each of them could be for like one salesperson in particular. You could also have a main one for the store so it's texting just from the main number from the store. Then you can have, I know it's, it's impossible to see because it's blurred out, but tracking uh, what we call phone number pools. See, to track search, to track uh, all visitors, to track Google ads, you know, and these things get installed on your website. And that's how we track where they're coming from and how we record them. Really, really awesome cool stuff. If you're interested uh, to find out more about Dealerly Pro, hit me up in the chat. I'll be more than thrilled to show you. But in the interest of time, I'm going to keep on uh, plowing ahead. I hope I didn't mess up that screen sharing. I just went full screen. Let's talk about what are the most important key performance indicators to look at when you're talking about your follow-up strategy, right? That's really important. And again, if you're hit me up on the chat, if you want to know about, um, you know, getting a copy of the of the um, slide deck of today's slide deck, so you can get these good ideas. So, <clears throat> lead response time, super super important, right? You want to know which is super important, how fast did we reply to that lead? And again, it boils down to what I showed you earlier on, which was how much percentage wise your conversion rate starts dropping drastically just after three minutes. You ideally want to be within 60 seconds because as you saw, it was 300 plus percent as far as your, your possibility of conversion ratio. You want to look at how many touch points you are you're, you're, you know, you're performing on average when we either set up dealer lead pro for a dealership where, cause they can just, they could just, uh, get dealer lead pro standalone. They don't have to work with beyond creative to get access to dealer lead pro. And then we just set it up for them, right? As a CRM, we do a setup. And when we set it up, we on average will give them at least 15 to 18 touch points, at least from there, we can customize according to what they want or their needs. Now you want to talk about the lead connect rate. So, okay, 
out of those 100 leads that came in, how many of them was I able to reach one way or another? How many of them was I able to reach by phone, email, et cetera? Was it able to reach 80% of them, you know, or 90% of them? And then you want to kind of break it down from there. Where was I able to reach them, right? What was your book deployment ratio after you reached them? Because that's a critical component of your follow-up strategy. Remember, there's always going to be, um, you know, you're going to try to be as human as you possibly can in the conversation. I tell our, our, our BDC staff and our follow-up team that, um, you know, they have the coolest job in the world because they're essentially just chatting with people all day long about really cool, amazing stuff, motorcycles, RVs, boats. Um, but at the end of the day, there's an, there's an agenda, right? Like, which is to bring them into the dealership. So you want to know as, as a key performance indicator, if, if your person, uh, you know, was con connected with a hundred people, how many of those people did they actually, uh, did they actually um, book an appointment for? And that's an important one. Um, I would, you know, I think an appointment, uh, nobody has asked this question yet, but I'll just give it, I'll give it to you anyway. Um, I, I think a good booking appointment ratio would probably be, um, you know, we're getting about 45%, um, close to 50%. Um, you know, I think a lot of dealers are happy with, you know, with 40, 40%. 40 um, so that's probably something to strive for in, in, in about the 40% uh, mark. It's going to depend a lot on the lead source and it also going to, it's going to depend a lot on where you're located and how you're advertising, right? Um, of course, we would love to be able to book 80% of the people that that enter lead, but you know that that's not necessarily realistic. Um, so then the next thing you know that that you want to keep in mind it's going to be your kept or missed appointment ratio, and you heard me talk about that earlier on before. Super super important. So before we go into a recap, and and I open it up for some Q and A, let's talk about how to calculate your return on investment with, and I should have changed that BDC. So a more simplistic terms, that's a little bit of jargon, but <clears throat> how you calculate your return on investment on your follow-up strategy, right? You want to look at a few things. Um, think to yourself, am I doing it in-house or versus outsource? So what is the person or persons that you have dedicated in your store to uh, doing follow-up, particularly internet follow-up, right? Um, how much you're paying them and and also very important, what's your cost of software that's included to make that happen? That's going to be an important aspect of calculating your cost. And then you can kind of burst that toward an outsourced solution. So, you know, a, a BDC business development company, as it's commonly called, which is just really a fancy term for a company that does follow up, internet follow up. And then you kind of compare, well, okay, what's going to be my return on investment on that? The amount of leads that you're currently getting is important. Uh, a lot of outside companies are going to either charge on a scale based on leads. We don't do that. We just do it based on if we if we place somebody that's dedicated for you. Um, and so that way it just becomes about the utilization of that individual, which is very much the way that you would calculate your return on investment for an individual working for you in-house. Right. So if you've got somebody dedicated to internet leads, that's one aspect you want to look at. What is their utilization rate? And there's tons of ways you can do that. If they're only dedicated to internet lead marketing, you could you could put a tracker on their local computer. You know, if you have if you have an IT department, contact the IT department, ask and they'll know about it. Um, there's tons of different trackers out there, and that kind of gives you a good idea of the utilization rate. Um, so I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but software access, training, and configuration is important. Are there any you know, what's the learning curve going to be? Uh, the configuration of the software is there an onboarding? So um, you know, the dedicated reps ratio to leads being generated is important, you know? So do you have two reps for 500 leads or do you have two reps for 200 leads? That's an important aspect to look at because if it's the latter, you probably have too many people dedicated, you know, to that. Um, additionally, you want to think about, are we doing any outbound initiatives um, aside just handling of the leads? Handling of the leads is, takes precedence, right? particularly when it comes to responding within 60 seconds. But there's also going to be time where your dedicated internet follow-up person has downtime 
why not? And by the way, if you want to book an appointment with me, I'll give you some of these goodies. I've got really cool about five or six different outbound programs that your follow-up or slash BDC person in-house can use to call somebody and saying, hey, we saw your 5,000 mile you know, uh, service is coming up. Why not book right now? Um, you know, just a, a, about five or six different programs that are outbound related to essentially bringing in more business to other aspects of, you know, fixed op for your dealership. Um, so that's another aspect that you want to look at. How much are they handling of the internet leads themselves versus, because a, a lot of dealers may think of it like, well, I don't have I don't know, I don't have enough leads to just dedicate one person for this position. But what they fail to realize is, hey, this person can also do outbound for programs like the ones I just mentioned. So the cost to generate leads, of course, is the last one, not to be ignored, super important. So thanks, Ken, my pleasure, great having you. Awesome, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you guys. So let's recap a little bit um, of what we just talked about. Um, let's talk about what you may want as a dealership, right? You don't want a system that's simple, fast, bu uh, budget conscious to implement, and that you can scale to an unlimited number of potential customers quickly and inexpensively. Now, you can technically do that without the technology and the automation, but if you're gonna fight that, it, you're gonna be fighting you know, with tooth and nails, essentially, because it, it's, it's tough. You got to use the power of automation to make it easier on your reps, to make it easier on your dedicated person for BDC for follow up. Um, but you definitely want a a, a, a process that's that's uh, on the technical aspect, simple, fast, and budget conscious. Right? Dealer Lead Pros license, I believe, if I'm, I'm mistaken, is very inexpensive. Um, I know of dealerships that are paying upwards of thousands of dollars for their CRM. Dealerly Pro is a full CRM, full marketing automation. It automates all of your lead sources coming in one place, Facebook Messenger, text messages, emails, uh, web chat. It does email marketing. I know, I know that I know of dealerships that pay four to five hundred bucks just for constant contact or MailChimp alone. And that is pretty much the cost of Dealerly Pro. So Dealerly Pro is a CRM software, full marketing automation, texting platform, web chat platform, um, reporting dashboard, uh, call tracking, call monitoring, monitoring for literally shy of 500 bucks a month per location. Super inexpensive. So you want it to be budget conscious and you want it to be where you simplify it. So as little uh, dashboards as possible that you, you know, don't have to be having 10 different logins and different signings. You want to scale out an unlimited, uh, unlimited number of potential customers quickly and inexpensively. So that's where the question comes in. Do I outsource my follow-up? Do I keep it in-house? Am I ready to have somebody else come up if I'm putting more volume into, into leads? You may be where a lot of dealers are right now where they're like, I cannot even think right now to add more volume of, to my leads because of you know 2020 and COVID and how it affected things and, and a low supply and a high demand. So you may just be thinking how in the heck do I get more out of my leads? Perfectly fine. That you know makes uh, makes makes sense. Um, and then you want to address the three main elements of profitable lead management, which are the ones that I went over, which are going to be your cadence, your reliable automation and integrations, and the last one, which is going to be your reporting. So cadence, automation, and reporting. Remember those three very important ones. How do you get um, this system that we're talking about. You implement a quality lead generation system. So you may already have one in place, but one particularly that cherry picks the best prospects for you. You implement a follow-up strategy that suits your dealership's optimal selling strategy. So whether you go in-house or you outsource to, you know, a firm like ours, as an example, and you focus on low-hanging fruit uh, marketing and automation tactics to get the highest return on your investment. Now you also, of course, one thing that I probably missed in there is to have the, the technology that comes along with it. So that's really what goes along with uh, number two. So what happens when, you, when the right strategy is implemented? You are going to, I guarantee you this, dominate your local market without a question. And you can start reinvesting new dollars to scale where you just implemented. You can also start the process of implementing this in-house 
or with the help of somebody like me or my team. So once you have this lead follow-up and customer acquisition system in place, there's really no limit to how much or how fast you can grow. It's really truly up to you. And I know of many dealerships that have different goals, different strategies and different tactics, and it's all okay. You know, it may not be something that you want to tackle or take on right away. It's totally fine. Now, what I, you know, would suggest to you is if you have an inkling that this may be something you're interested in, whether having it done outsourced by, you know, by help of somebody like my team, or you want to do it in-house, but you want to talk about it, book a call, hit me up, go to, you could either just email me at the email on my screen, which is joe at gobeyondcreative.com. Let me actually put my email in the chat for you guys. Or, oop, that was just to the panelists. Uh, panelists and attendees. Okay. Oh, there we go. Azra, thank you. So joe at gobeyondcreative.com, right? Or you can visit joe, sorry, gobeyondcreative.com slash schedule. Let me, let me put the HTTP S to make sure, see if it gives you the link. Yep, now it's the link. So you can click on that, on that link. You'll get my calendar availability. No obligation. Let's just talk, let's chat. I'll give you tons of resources um, if you book with me. Um, I am truly just invested in helping out dealerships. Doesn't matter whether they become our customers or not. Doesn't matter if they buy Dealerly Pro, a Dealerly Pro license or not. It doesn't matter if they do business with Beyond Creative or not. I want dealerships to succeed and have more resources. That is the point of my webinar today. That is the reason why I was so persistent in trying to get you to join me here today uh, because I care about your success no matter what the avenue is. So let's have a chat about it. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for some questions and answers. So I may have actually been neglecting the chat a little bit. Hazra, do you know we have some some questions that I did not answer? Um, you want to go back on some of those for me? Let me see. Oh, uh, well, Rob had a few questions about Dealer Lead Pro. Okay. He's asking, yeah, whether it is useful for parts um, and services departments. So he, so I think his question was, does this allow my parts and service departments to use departmentally? Yes, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> what what you could do is what's really cool. And you know what? Let me do this. Um, I'm just going to show some of the capabilities of what we can do. So you can set up multiple dashboards, but what I would recommend is just one dashboard per location. So Rob, if, if you have like, I believe if it's Rob from, I'm not gonna divulge name, but a big Honda dealer that I know about. Um, what's up, Rob? Nice to see you. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Um, then I believe you may be one location. If that's the case, I would just recommend one dashboard, okay? But then you can set up teams. So it's really cool here. And you know, you can't see it because you know it's blurred out, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you can add like, okay, you know, uh, you could add a sales team, a service team, you know, uh, part, you know, parts and accessories, et cetera. Um, and then each team can have separate calendars um, which, by the way, we've got a Google Calendar integration. We're working on getting uh, a, <clears throat> a Microsoft Office Calendar integration soon. So hopefully, you know, keep, keep an eye out for that. And one thing I forgot to mention too, by the way, all, a vast majority of the, the features here available on web, also on Dealerly Pro, super available. Are, are, they're all available on, on Android and iOS. So <clears throat> you'll have access to all of the leads and customers info right then and there at the tip of you know your phone pretty much um, which if, if any of you are interested I could share that from my phone to kind of show you what it looks like so yes you could use it departmentally you could you could split up by the departments they can have their own calendars based on department and then you can have campaigns based on departments so like as an example, Let's go to some of our good friends over here and let's see. Okay, so check this out. During onboarding, we set up our friends at this dealership with um, 
essentially a, a way to split what's coming in. So like if it's vehicle sales, it's going into a sequence that's longer for nourishing purposes. You know, it, go, it goes in here. Um, if it goes into parts, it's a shorter one. And it just kind of says, you know, it sends an email, quick note about your parts of Chris, thank you for your parts of Chris, you turn on our website. My name is so and so. So it injects the name if you're having it round robin. So if you, so if it's like different parts, you know, specialist in your team, it will inject your name, you know, inject your email signature. And it's just like, hey, I just want to confirm your, your original parts request and, you know, um, and, 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 the, and the time frame. And the, the text message is very similar. So again, we're just looking for an engagement here. But but yeah, to your point, you could use it departmentally. Now, let me show you something real cool that we have, have actually deployed. And, and we're constantly developing stuff like this. So it's ready to implement very quickly for your dealership. But like one example here we have of service. Um, they've, okay, so... So let's say this, these are for leads. So this is, this is going to be a little bit different, but let's see, come over here to the opportunities. So we have triggers. It's not in the campaign. It's on, under triggers. And all, this is a pipeline essentially, but it's used for the purpose of service, Rob. Now your, your service department can use this and can customize this like greeting scheduled in shop, ready for pickup, ready for delivery, however they want. Right, they, they they can customize all of those stages like like as quickly as going here into settings, and going into pipelines, and then service. And look at that, boom, boom, boom. I can I can edit all these stages. I can add stages. I can remove. I can you know bring them up, whatever. Um, but check this out real quick, which is really cool. Once it's in shop, I'm not gonna actually drop the card because then you know they'll get notified. But once I bring this and I'll say, okay, this guy's ready uh, or not in shop, sorry, the other way around. It's in shop and then, oh, this guy's ready for pickup. Boom. And they drop it into the ready for pickup uh, column. Guess what happens? The customer now gets a text and or an email saying, hey, so-and-so, thank you so much for entrusting us with your service needs. Your baby's ready for pickup. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So, um, Super cool use for it. Tons of other different uses that you know you can implement it for. Um, but definitely really, really cool case study here on how it can be used for, for service. Similarly, you could use it for parts too. If there's a lot of stuff on back order, you can very simply like quickly create a, um, a pipeline that's based on that. And if you say, okay, something's on back order, as an example, you can have you know, all a list of back order people on one column. And then let's just say the parts manager gets notification that, 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 that those parts are available. Now he can just have that person. Let's just make pretend that instead of greeting is this was a back order column and he could just say, okay, uh, notification that it just arrived and he just sweep, you know, slides it over, boom. And it sends the lead a notification saying, Hey, so-and-so just want to let you know your part arrived, your parts are already here. You, and you could do it whether it was a custom order or whether it was just that they were waiting for the part to be, you know, to, to come back in stock. It could also be used similarly too for vehicles, like some RV dealerships, you know, um, their leads are a lot more specific on what they're trying to look for. Like I want a coach that has, you know, a shower with a warm bidet next to the toilet. I don't know. Uh, and, and I don't want, you know, to spend half a mil unless it's that particular coach I want. Well, similarly, okay, that, that coach just arrived in stock on the, on the lot. You could just do that and boom, you go, you go like that. And, and you could do it one by one, or here's what's really cool. Sorry, I geek out, I get really excited about stuff like this. You can go to contacts and you can go to smart lists and you could create lists based on parameters. So let's just say that you had a tag that was like, you know, bidet interested customers, <laughs> whatever. You put in tag and then, I don't know, whatever that tag may be let's just put whichever one for now uh okay so whatever facebook follow-up uh i guess there's i guess there aren't any in there for for this particular tag but let's see 
let's just say uh, okay this this one okay so now i've got a list of all these people and i could just literally click select all either select these 20 or select all records and then see this little robot here when you hover over it it says add to campaign i can add them all at once to a campaign like the ones i showed you guys previously like oh see the facebook follow-up all vehicles you know oem polaris blah, blah 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 whichever you have built or we have built for you or you could even send them a manual text message which you can just create right then and there you could say and you can add tags like saying contact customer first name you know it's hard to see because it's blurred out but your i don't know 2021 you know coach has arrived exclamation mark you can send them all at once you can schedule them and then you can send boom and blast them and you just and it all it goes out you could even add emojis on here i mean it's so awesome it's really it's really really cool um same thing with email you just boom send email some of them you you know you, you could you could use templates that have been pre-built or you could just write it here you have your subject line from from email blah, 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 blah. you can add trigger links trigger links meaning means that if they clicked on something in your email then we can have another action happen it could either a just let you know a person the person clicked on the link or even more exciting it can send you a notification saying that the person clicked on it so you could say click this link if you're interested um to uh, book an appointment, or if you're interested in a callback, or if you, whatever, you know, um, for an appointment may not be a good example, because you, you, you just send them to a landing page that has, you know, your appointment widget, whatever. But I mean, the sky's the limit. There's so much really cool stuff. And again, this is our secret weapon. Remember, we're lead generation experts and lead management experts. And this is what we use as the backbone and the bridge for both. So keep that in mind. And this is something that's available to dealerships standalone. Dealer Lead Pro is something that is available to dealerships um, on its own without even having to engage um, us uh, as, as a firm. So I'm kind of over time. I got so excited. I didn't realize it's already past two. Any other questions that uh, you may have, put them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up for the day just out of respect for everybody's time. Um, feel free to ask any questions. Oh, Rob, Rob typed a really good um, question, which was how many texts can you send? I believe if I'm not mistaken, um, 4,000 texts, uh, 4,000 texts and up to 40, no, I think it's up to 50,000 emails a month. And then after that, uh, it's just very, very cheap rates. We do not make any profit on the text. We essentially charge whatever Twilio's cost is. So Twilio has um, costs that are, are very um, inexpensive. That's the engine we use to fulfill the text messages. So whatever overages, you know, you would get our, and we get a special rate by the way, because of our volumes. So that's a really good question, Rob. Thank you for that. Um, um, you asked about does it work departmentally? Yes, certainly. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, yes, definitely for service work. Um, all right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining me, man. It was great having you. I hope you're really, really doing well. You guys are kicking butt. Great seeing you. Um, all right, cool. So, <clears throat> Yep, dealerleadpro.com will take you to the landing page. I want to check, see if our pricing on there is not outdated. It's currently about $4.97 per month per location. Still very inexpensive. I mean, just 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 to get rid of um, your cost of MailChimp or Constant Contact, it's worth it. Because um, again, you've got the capacity to build emails like just so quick. I mean, you have some, some predetermined uh, templates, but then you can just go in here 
And all of those smart lists that I showed you earlier, you could, it's so easy to put some stuff together here. I'll two columns. I'm going to do, I don't know, I'm going to do here a footer. Uh, it's just, it's just super simple. Schedule it, you know, pick the list, the smart list you want to send it to um, by tags. I mean, you name it. It's just really, really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, if you got any questions, hit me up. You can go to dealerlypro.com, check out some more info on Dealerly Pro, or book a uh, call with me. Um, you can go to uh, gobeyondcreative.com slash schedule or lp.gobeyondcreative.com slash book hyphen Joe, or hit me up on my email, joe at gobeyondcreative.com. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Awesome to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And looking forward to seeing you on the next one.